Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in crypto and bring them out in bite-sized pieces. Today, just like the thumbnail suggests, uh, I am still bullish on cryptocurrencies and digital assets. And this is three reasons why I'm still buying and still bullish. So first thing I wanna talk about is the history. Just take a look back about what's been going on as far as like in our sector, in our market. And this is why I'm so bullish because we just take a look at the past. Also, we'll take a look at things that are going on with the big banks and some things going on with little banks. And also we'll do a little bonus from Alex Mashinsky about an article about quantitative easing and Celsius. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first let's go into the market. So today, down day right? We, I actually thought this was actually going to happen a little bit sooner than what it was. And um, I thought this happened last week, but it didn't. We actually had a great run and we were at 2.2 trillion. Now we just, you know, a couple 200 billion just seems to have disappeared as people take profits. And that's normal. It's normal for that to happen. So if you're new to this space, you come from the traditional finance, don't worry. Uh, you know, a 4% loss in 24 hours. Some people in the traditional market might say the sky is falling. Uh, here in crypto, we call it a Thursday, not a big deal. So uh, we've also got uh, the Bitcoin down 47 may go below that. I wouldn't be surprised if it did. Uh, we've also take a look at Ethereum. It's uh, slipping down, might go below 3000. Cardano 256, but man, what a magnificent run that Cardano has had. It's, it's gone up, I mean, just huge. Binance coin, everything's down, everything's down, except for, uh, hey, Solana. Solana is up uh, 8%. Look at that. 8%. That's what we call decoupling. That's actually good for the market. I'm actually happy to see that. But even the last seven days, I mean, we've had, we've had some pretty good runs, but this is not surprising. And I know for things like today, people will get a little concerned, but you just kind of have to look at this and go, where have we been and where are we going? So let's just break into it, huh? Let's talk about the history. So the history for Bitcoin essentially is this. This is uh, from 99bitcoins.com, pretty great website. You can take a look at all the different things that's uh, as far as like past history. Looks pretty volatile, right? Actually, not too bad, actually. I mean, we'll take a look at it. 38,000, then you had uh, 63,000. So yeah, a little volatile, uh, 29,000 and so on and so forth. But what I wanna make you aware of is I want you to just do this. If you take a look at Bitcoin going all the way back to 2000, well, almost 2009 on this on this website, you can see it's pretty flat. And here is the 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 big areas. And then of course here we are have over here. But I want to break it down even further. When you take a look at this, and pull this up so you can see it. When you blow when you take a look at what's going on in these dates, it looks pretty crazy. But look, every single time frame has some kind of massive spikes and dips and volatility and so on and so forth. So if you're back here, you're like, oh man, I'm, I'm in the money. I have 30 cents in Bitcoin. Then it went to 42 cents, watch out. And then all of a sudden up you go. It's a $29 and you're a genius. But again, if we just take this and just look at it in the grand scheme of things, uh, it's not a big deal. So that was back in 2011. Now here we are in 2021. And the big thing about this is if you're a fan of history, you may take a look at Bitcoin and go, you know what? This is not a bad uh, investment. Now on this channel, this is not investment advice, this is investment opinion. But the thing is, is that since the beginning of the cryptocurrency, the crypto that has been number one forever has been Bitcoin. And yes, it's true that, you know, you, you're not gonna see these massive gains like you had back, you know, uh, 10 years ago. But I mean, think about it this way. Uh, my goals are not your goals and your goals is not somebody else's goals. So if you're taking a look at, you know, maybe if you're like in your uh, late teens, early 20s, and you're like, you know what, I want to hold on to Bitcoin for another 10, 20, 30 years. This would be the time to invest into Bitcoin. If you're uh, uh, an, an older person, we'll say a seasoned veteran, and you really have, got, have made a ton of money already or just, you know, just well off. Maybe you want to invest into Bitcoin because you're like, I want to leave something for my children, my grandchildren. And of course, in 10 years, I mean, look how far we've gone in uh, 10 years before. Who knows how far we're going to go in 10 years after this. Some people will speculate 250,000. Some people say 500,000. Some people say a million. It doesn't really matter. So if you're looking at like the safest bet in one of the uh, most volatile market, I still say it is Bitcoin because since the beginning of time, it's been number one. And if you had that on the on the S&P 500 for the last 10 years, you'd probably bet on that too. And uh, that is it uh, for me. I think that even if you look at Ethereum, 
shoot, even you look at uh, uh, XRP, Cardano, been around for quite some time. They've been in the top 10 for, for a very good amount of time. So maybe you'd get into something like that. So for me, I take a look at the history. I go, history's uh, still strong. I think I can get into this. So that's one reason. The second reason is I like to take a look at what is going on in the, just the regular world. And the regular world has something like this, where we got Citigroup gearing up to trade CME Bitcoin futures. And this is just one. Uh, Wells Fargo is getting into it. JP Morgan, all the different big banks getting into it. You know, two years ago, they laughed at us. Then all of a sudden they, they told us, they told everybody, ah, oh, it's just for, you know, just awful illicit activities. And now all of a sudden they're like, you know what, we need to get on that because we're going to get blockbustered. So real quick, uh, Citigroup, they're just awaiting regulatory approval to begin trading futures contracts on the CME. Citi is actively recruiting people to join a crypto focused team in London. So I, I, I like these articles because it says like, you know, uh, somebody familiar with the case. But if you take a look at the want ads uh, for Citigroup, uh, here's one. It's a uh, quantitative developer, FX Auto Trader, and Algo, algorithm, I guess. Here's the key responsibilities. Work on extending existing functionality and help to expand current components to cover new areas, including STIRT and crypto. So again, this is uh, another one of those big uh, entities that are like, oh, no, no, no. I mean, we might get into it, but we're just, you know, we're just advertising it and talking about it ad nauseum. It's the same thing with Walmart, the same thing with Amazon. They're like, no, 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 we're not really into it, into it, but we're just hiring for it. Come on. So when I see these big groups getting into it, I'm like, you know what? Checkmate. I think this is a good sector to invest into. And also, if we're talking about big banks, this was a great article about little banks. This is a, an Oklahoma bank is allowing customers to buy crypto on its app. And this is from, it's called Vast Bank. That's a great name, Vast, Vast Bank. Uh, they've been testing computer purchases of crypto uh, for the first half of the year and now ready to have customers buy Bitcoin and seven other crypto in the same place they check account balances. And just real quick, <clears throat> I have USAA because I'm a veteran. And uh, I gotta tell you, uh, they actually have an integration with Coinbase as well. I just can't buy it on there. So when I saw it in USAA, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. One of the you know older banks getting into to cryptocurrency, just allowing me to, to, to sync what I have over at Coinbase. But this one's a look, taking it even to the next level because what they're doing is they're saying, hey, uh, you like crypto? Sure, you're gonna be able to buy it with your bank account and just gonna do seamlessly uh, back and forth. And then this is from the CEO, he says, I don't know what he's talking about here, but he says, you've probably seen the surveys that have said 60% of folks that haven't engaged with crypto yet are saying they would like to, but they like to do it through their bank. I know right now you're shouting at the screen, but uh, you have to understand, some people don't have a high risk tolerance. Some people have n no problems putting, you know, $10 million onto a ledger uh, and just be like, no, they're my keys, no big deal. And some people, they can't take 20 bucks out of their bank without squeaking. So whatever people wanna to do to grow in crypto, I could care less uh, as long as they're just here. And then hopefully baby steps, we can teach them all about the more things. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. I just think, hey, if the big banks are getting in, the medium banks are getting in, and the small banks are getting in, I think we're in the right place at the right time. And then lastly, I just wanna talk about, uh, this was a great article. And it's something that I had totally forgot about. And I can't even remember this far back. But this is, this is Alex Mashinsky, uh, the CEO of Celsius, and he says, the 8.8% yield we pay on stable coins is true value of USD. And I'm like, I don't know if that's true, but this is what he says, and it makes a lot of sense. So the, Alex says, the almost 9% we pay on stable coins is the real value of the US dollar. It's not 0.1%, which is what JP Morgan or Wells Fargo, or even my bank tells me uh, they should be earning. He talks about his earlier days when you could earn 7% from a bank on a simple deposit. I do not remember making 7% in my checking account ever. Uh, Alex isn't that much older than me, so I, I got to ask him about that. And then he states this. This is a great quote. The Fed and the banks are robbing a whole generation, not just the young people, but also retirees of their money. And we're doing that because we're trying to basically save the American economic machine. So look. I couldn't agree more. Um, this quantitative easing and this printing of money really devalues everything else. And the problem with that is that when they, when the government or 
when the Fed and the Treasury print so much money, it doesn't go directly to you first or me first. It goes to some of the richest people in the world and they get to use and buy whatever they want to. And that kind of filters down to, you know, the, the serfs, the people like you and me. And then all of a sudden we're like, hey, what the heck? All this stuff just went up like crazy. Where, where'd all my money go? Oh yeah, we got to print some more. So when Alex Mashinsky is talking about, hey, you know what? Uh, we're going to pay you for you keeping your USDC, your stable coin on Celsius, because it's worth that much. It's worth 7% back in the day, and we're gonna give you 8.8%. This, I can definitely get behind, and these are the reasons why I'm still bullish, because I think that if all these things that are going on, big banks, little banks, history, I think it's a great time to be in crypto, whatever you wanna do, dollar cost average, value cost average, or if you wanna go all in like Diddy, go ahead and do that. Anyhow. So that's it for today. So first of all, I want to say if you made all the way in, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Also, if you are looking for uh, Celsius, a, a link to actually uh, get Celsius itself, there is a uh, exchange of wallet fees. There's a link in the description. It looks just like this. And these are all the different exchanges and wallets I've ever used. Of course, Voyager and Celsius are very highly recommended. Kraken, KuCoin, SwiftX for all you Australians. Gemini, Gemini Pro, Binance, SimpleSwap, Uniswap, Coinbase, and so on and so forth and Uphold. So everything's there and uh, they are affiliate links. So if you don't like affiliate links, you don't want to make up to $40 in Bitcoin, don't use the affiliate links. Go straight there. That's okay. I will not be offended. But if you like Bitcoin and would like to earn something by opening up an account, use the affiliate links and it sends you to the right place instead of you getting scammed going to just a little bit off like celsius x or something or celsius with two c's whatever so anyhow look that is it for today uh, again if you made all the way in thanks so much if you like the video and you found some value give it a thumbs up also consider subscribing a lot of things we talk about are time sensitive and that's it so thanks a lot i appreciate it and i'll see you on the next one